Now let's talk about the deadweight loss associated with taxes. Here's the thing. Deadweight loss, what it really is, is it's how much less total surplus do we have uh, after the tax is imposed. Now, first let's look at what the surplus was before the tax. Before the tax, when we were over here at an equilibrium of 100 units with a price of 10, the consumer surplus was this triangle, right, everything above 10 underneath the demand curve. The producer surplus was this triangle, everything underneath 10, this triangle, underneath 10 and above the supply curve, right? So really, long story short, this whole thing was the total surplus. So let's look at how much less do we have now compared to all that. Well now, let's first look at the consumer surplus. They're facing a price of 12 instead of 10, and they're only buying 80 units. So their consumer surplus is actually only this area now. This is the new CS area. Uh, notice it's less than before by, you know, by this trapezoid. This trapezoid is how much it went down by because it used to also have that, right? It used to be above 10, now it's above 12. So it makes sense. Consumers are worse off. They have to pay more and they get to buy fewer items. The producer surplus, though, keep in mind, yeah, sure, they're getting 12. It might seem like they might be better off. They're getting 12 bucks from their customer instead of 10. But they have to pay the government three. So after paying the three, they're only getting nine. So really, they are worse off than before, for sure. Uh, instead of 10, they're getting nine, so their producer surplus will now be this. So if we still measure it from the original, we still measure it, notice, from the original supply curve, not the new one, because we're kind of getting rid of the, we're not including the, the tax uh, in their producer surplus because they don't get to keep it. So in that case, and their true cost then is the original supply curve. So this is their new producer surplus. Notice though, that's also still less than before. It's less by that area, that trapezoid, because it used to be everything below 10, now it's everything below nine, so that's less area. So the CS and PS combined, these two shaded regions, it seems then like this, this sort of sideways home, house, you know, house-shaped region is the deadweight loss. But it's actually a lot less than that because not all that money's going to nobody because one thing we have to take into account now which should always be included as a part of the total surplus is government revenues. So the total surplus for society includes CSPS and any government revenues that, you know, we also have to subtract any government expenditures, but here there are no expenditures. So here, uh, what we need to include then is the government revenues. Now, how much money does the government make? They're making $3 per item. For how many items? Well, 80 that are transacted. So three times 80. Now we could look at that as this rectangle because this rectangle over here has a height of three, right? The gap between the two supply curves is the per unit tax of $3 times this quantity. So literally this length times width is the government revenue, G. So when you take all that into account, if you look at how much is shaded compared to before when we had all this, we still have a little bit less area. So notice, even though the government gets money, it always gets less than how much CS and PS combined went down by, and that's why there's still going to be this area that we don't capture, and that's deadweight loss here. This triangle is deadweight loss.